president and co-founder of the Wildlife Center of Virginia. And people uh, ask my colleagues, well, does Ed still work at the Wildlife Center? They say, no, he hasn't worked there for years. <laughs> but, uh, but I need, I still have an office here, and I'm still on the payroll. But uh, as president of the organization, I get the, the wonderful uh, privilege of being able to go out and release eagles. But my main job here is to hire the best people in the world to do the work of the Wildlife Center and then stay the hell out of their way, which I try to do most of the time. And we do, in fact, uh, you're, you're going to get to see some, some stuff today that uh, I hope will impress you as much as it should. Uh, the work of the Wildlife Center that, with which you're acquainted through uh, your, your eagle interest is, is certainly wonderful, but it is really the tip of the iceberg here. And we have uh, things going on here I think that will amaze you. Uh, and part of what I want to do this morning is just kind of give you a little bigger picture of what the Wildlife Center is all about. Uh, you know part of us, but uh, there's much more to it. This organization started back in 1982, and people ask me all the time, how did you happen to start the Wildlife Center? And they think I'm kidding when I say that it was a bet, uh, and, and with a heavy dose of testosterone poisoning thrown in, uh, to which I used to be terribly vulnerable. And uh, they, not so much anymore. I don't heal nearly as fast. As I used to. Yeah, the famous last words: "Hold this and watch. <laughs> Hold my beer." So uh, the the truth is that back in 1982, uh, four of us were sitting around one day talking. Uh, the other guy, there were two couples. The other guy is a wildlife veterinarian named Stuart Porter, who is uh, the head of the veterinary technology program up at Blue Ridge Community College, not too far from here. His wife, Terry, uh, is a zoo vet, or was a zoo vet, Stuart used to be a zoo veterinarian. My uh, former wife, Nancy Sheffield, is a veterinary technician and was one of Stuart's students. And my background at the time was in environmental policy and environmental organization management. I had just escaped from a number of years working in Washington with an organization called the Environmental Task Force, of which I was the assistant director. So at the time, I was traveling the country, working for conservation organizations, helping them do strategic planning, helping them develop their leadership and do fundraising planning. And I was an environmental mediator, so I was kind of in the business of decision making related to conservation. So Stuart Porter, uh, being a former zoo vet and being at the community college, was pretty visible. And people would bring him injured animals, injured wildlife but he didn't have a place to keep them, so he'd have to doctor them up and then send them back with members of the public, which just made him crazy, because he didn't really like people all that much, honestly. <laughs> but uh, he was saying, you know, somebody ought to do something, as is often said, and I said, well, okay, I'm going to put my consultant hat on, and here's what you ought to do. You need to start an organization, get a board of directors, and then incorporate, and then become nonprofit, and then you can start getting contributions and then you can get a facility and then you can hire staff and at this point he was spewing experts <laughs> and questioning my intellect, my lineage, my sanity and you can't do that. Yes I can. No you can't. Yes you can't. No, you, you, I'll show you. Well here we are almost 27 years later. Uh, Stuart left us about 16 or 17 years ago now and uh, the uh, of the four founders, I'm the last one that's left, and uh, last man standing, as it were. And I don't know yet whether I've won that bet or lost it. <laughs> so, uh, some days uh, it's hard to tell. So uh, here we are. We started off as the Shenandoah Valley Wildlife Treatment and Rehabilitation Center, a name that will live in nobody's memory. Uh, it didn't then, and it certainly doesn't now. But uh, by 1982, when we started, that seemed like a pretty big bite of the pie, the whole Shenandoah Valley. Well, by 1985, we changed the name to the Wildlife Center of Virginia because by that time, as the only, the first and only, professionally staffed facility for wildlife care, even though we were operating out of a barn, we were still the best thing that had ever been. And we got animals from all over and all kinds of things. We were shocked. First month, we actually got five patients in, five birds of prey. They all came from one source, the SPCA in Charlottesville, but we were a little overwhelmed with that kind of a patient load. Five animals. Well, to give you a little perspective, uh, our, our record day around here is 130 animals in one day. 
So we look back on five animals in a month and chuckle, you know. It's just like, oh, we didn't even need to get out of bed to do that, you know. <laughs> but uh, over the years, we have uh, we've grown quite a bit. We started off being a wildlife care facility, but we realized very quickly that we were putting band-aids on symptoms. The real issue was human behavior, human decisions, human activity, whether it was individual activity of just day-to-day -day citizens or whether it was societies and, and the community's activity in land use planning or environmental management, uh, people were the problem. And we very quickly made the decision that in order to be effective, we had to not only deal with animals, we needed to deal with people. And that really became my part of the organization. Uh, I'm not a veterinarian, never have been, never claim to be. I do not do veterinary work on the animals here at the Wildlife Center. We've got a wonderful team that does that. My background is not even sciences, or at least not natural sciences. My background is political science, did my graduate work in education, and believe me, I use those two fields of endeavor every single day. And uh, that has uh, proven to be one of the Wildlife Center's strengths in that we have diversity. We've got a lot of animal experts. <coughs> conservation is not about animals. Conservation is about people. So the mission of our organization, as many of you know, is teaching the world to care about and care for wildlife and the environment. And that is something uh, we don't need to work very hard on you folks because you already care about it deeply. And some of you that have traveled so far to get here, it just kind of blows my mind, I have to be honest with you. But we appreciate it more than you know. And the ways in which uh, the many of you have cared for wildlife, uh, the, the incredible photography that we're seeing, the, the beautiful artwork, the fundraising, the calendars, the mugs, the enthusiasm, the transporting stuff to us, the, uh, the fight that happens every time we need an eagle uh, to get a taxi ride that, uh, no, I want to take it, you got to take it last time. <laughs> Trust me, we, uh, I, I, I truly mean this, that your enthusiasm over the last year for the things that we do, your attention to detail, sometimes your frightening <laughs> specific attention to detail, uh, is highly motivating for us, and, and we really, really do appreciate it. So on behalf of my whole team here at the Wildlife Center, my colleagues, uh, my friends, my bosses on our board, uh, we, we really want to say thanks because you help us do what we do. And 